over here to check out this area where there was a uh, the fire that they gave me the notification for on my phone emergency evacuation notice and as you can see there's no visible fire there's a bunch of dry leaves on all the trees and stuff but I'm gonna show you what I found up here exactly what I already knew I'd find before I came which is the indicators of plasma fire and this is just the first spot that I stopped these are the first signs that I'm seeing as I drive up, I'm like, oh shit, there's some. Unburned, burned, unburned. Same thing with the rest of these. Same thing with this. Fire don't do that. Fire don't leave this part unburned and then burn this part. And then leave all these unburned spots in between. So this is absolutely plasma fire. The first spots I come across. This is all the signs of electricity coursing through the ground. Look at how much it's completely disintegrated this piece. All the way gone. For half of the branch. The underside. And unburned on the top. That means the energy is radiating up through the ground. Burning the underside of the branches. Not the top. This is a pattern that I've shown many times before. You can see how this was a much bigger diameter. You can see the diameter that it once was back here. It was that big all the way across. But it's burnt out that much of the underside. And then up the road a little further. So as you can see, and that's sitting there existing. Man, you can totally see the patterns. The unburn that comes through here, this stripe of unburn, this stripe of unburn. All of this being unburned with a highly burned area right here, and a highly burned area right here. And a little spot that poked through, that little burn spot right there, that poked through. I'm not going to make this video trying to explain this to newcomers. I know there's no newcomers here anyway. The highly burned here, unburned, unburned, burned on the tips. how well it's really picking that up between the shadows and everything it's just not doing it right highly burned here unburned there unburned there and all the grass see all the unburnt grass so clearly there was no fire moving across the ground here it comes up and just like when you put a, uh, something in the microwave, oh, look at this hole burned out. Oh, and you can see how it's hollowed out in there. Man, I got so much glare on the screen because the sun's right behind me. That I can't see shit. I might have to start this video over. It's missing this whole spot. The densest part of a log is the knot. A knot is where two branches comes together. This will be a knot right here where a branch comes out. This is a knot right here where a branch comes out. When you're cutting the wood, the knot is the hardest part to cut. Here's another example. You can see right through it right here. See right through it. It's unburned on this side. All the way burnt out on the inside. Up and around and in. Oh, we had it for a second. Completely burned out on the inside and on the underside. Unburned on the top. Another one of those little spots that just pokes through. This little spot right here with unburned all around it. More proof that it's electricity coursing through the wood. This little piece right here looks like it used to be connected to this log. I'm not sure. Unburned on one side, charcoal on the other, fine line between the burn and the unburn. So how far are we into this? Four minutes, less than five minutes into this, and I've basically shown enough that there's no reason to show any more. 
the fire that I've made a few videos about that was visible from where I'm living right now here in Heber is absolutely plasma fire. Again, look at all the unburned weeds everywhere. Unburn, unburn everywhere. And spots of plasma fire here and there. So like I was saying, microwave electricity, there's more of the proof that it's electricity. Fire doesn't burn something like this. Turning this to charcoal, leaving that unburned, and repeating that pattern over and over and over and over and over and over and over. When you put something in the microwave, a bread roll and a potato, turn it on for one minute. You pull it out and the potato's a lot hotter than the bread roll. Because the potato is denser than the bread roll. And microwave electricity draws toward the more dense material, leaving the less dense, more flammable in a regular fire. Weeds are far more flammable than logs. But in a plasma fire, the denser material draws the energy towards it and burns, while the less dense material is just fine and left unburned. So this stuff operates much like microwave. You'll see here that the uh, there's these little spots all over. Plasma fire. Another piece burned on the bottom side. Unburned on the top side. So now that's a couple times we've shown that pattern. This one just burned on the end. I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to get this because the lighting and the angle but it's just burnt out on the inside on the end unburnt on the rest of it the denser material drawing the energy in the microwave leaving the more flammable material behind so we're already way past proof that this was a plasma fire not much need for me to take much more video. And this is what I already knew I was going to find. Here's more burn line patterns showing electricity. Uh, like, what do they call it? Uh, fractal burning. I'm trying to think of the other word for it. Lichtenberg burning. Here's another one where it's just burnt on the end and on the underside. Try and get the angle of the lighting right so it might, might work with us. Just on the end and on the underside. That's the side that was pointing down. And it's just burnt on the tip, on the end of the branch. On my very first plasma fire, this is what I noticed. Branches laying all over the ground looking like this. Only burned on the end of the branch where it broke away from the tree. The spot where it was plugged into the tree... The branch had fallen down and was unburned other than the little circle on the end of it where it attached to the tree. Like the trees were all blown apart. And I realized, man, something happened here. Here's a bunch of those little spots that poke through. One there, one there, one there. Little spots that poke through of electricity that breach the surface, leaving the unburned all around them. Maybe I should have wiped my camera lens before I started. That might have helped. So, uh, there was one more microwave analogy. I think here we have another example of where it's burning on the bottom side that's facing the ground. Unburned on the top side. Like the energy is radiating up from the ground. I think I had another microwave analogy. Oh, that's the thing. So, I've also made this analogy where it strikes the things that have deepest roots, just like lightning coming down from the sky strikes the thing that's tallest, sticking highest up into the air. Lightning coming up from the ground strikes the thing that has deepest roots into the ground. But as you can see, all of these trees that have burned, they didn't have any roots sticking into the ground. So it's like an electricity that doesn't need a wire to connect to the thing that it's going to burn. It radiates wirelessly. Like the microwave when you put your food in it. 
You don't need to hook a wire up to the bowl or the hot dog or the potato. This one, I guarantee, it's all burnt out on the underside, highly charcoal. But I'm not sure. I can't. I can't see shit because the glare on the screen. Maybe I should pause it and try and wipe it. But looking back over the ground we just covered, you can see there's plenty of unburned weeds all through here and highly burnt logs. Well, in a normal fire, it takes a lot more to burn a log than a weed. The weeds are far more flammable. That's my car right over there where we started. So I've only walked a couple hundred feet from where, I, where we started. Looks like we might have burnt rocks. I'm looking at these burnt rocks. That has been a thing. I don't think this actually is. But if I see some, I'll let you know. Looks like right in here, right in the middle of all these unburned leaves, that may or may not be. That might not be. There's plenty of examples where you'll see a highly burnt log embedded right in the middle of the highly flammable leaves and weeds that remain unburned. So I just wanted to come down here and document the fact that it was plasma fire, something I already knew that I would find before I even set out on the journey. Every fire is now plasma fire. I haven't found any exceptions in the last six years. In one or two cases where I've stopped and looked at the remnants of a fire, I haven't been able to see the exact proof. But that might have been just because my eye wasn't trained well enough to be able to see it. Here, plenty more evidence. This is all burned. Intermittently, here and there. Little piece of charcoal here. On the same piece where there's unburned here and charcoal here. In the midst of all the highly flammable material around it. So fire didn't come to each one of these things by spreading through the surface. It's clearly plasma fire. Again, I'm gonna try not to explain this to newcomers and just talk to people who already know a thing or two about what it is I'm showing you. So everything around here all over has the uh, plasma fire burn signatures all over it. As with every fire out there, that's what I mean. All of you have had the opportunities, go to the local area where there's been a fire in your area and document the patterns that you're already well versed in. So here's a, another example, all the unburned leaves all around it. The charcoal. Sun ain't helping, but you can see this is charcoal right here on the end. And this is a little bit of blackening, charcoaling on this, on the bark right here, but not on this other side. So it's like it was being radiated. But like I was saying, you've all had the opportunity to go do the same thing in your area. I even got people sending me messages in the comments. Hey, check out this fire. It's, it's only a couple miles from my house. And I go, huh? And you're telling me to go check it out? There's a problem here. Oh, well, I didn't really want to make a video and be on YouTube. Uh, guess what? Neither did I. You got your priorities all fucked up. You got more important things to do. Looks like we got a little ash on the ground, whatever was right there. But yeah, all of this charcoal here, unburned here. Plasma fire everywhere amidst the unburnt weeds. So I think I'm going to end this video unless I see something new and different rather than just continuously showing you all of the same patterns over and over and over. Because like uh, after six years, what more is there to show you? 
Here, this one's highly charcoaled on this side, unburnt on that side. And unburnt down here at the bottom where I'm holding it. Oh, except a little spot here and right there on the end. So it's a, a geomagnetic induction, electricity come up from the ground, microwave energy, whatever you want to call it. Plasma fire. Burned on the bottom side. Well, it's just kind of burned on the edge, that one. Plasma fire works in mysterious ways, and it's got a bunch of different patterns that it expresses itself in. But yeah, look at all the unburned area. I'm, I'm cruising, I'm driving, I'm looking for the burn area where there's fire, and it's like, wait a minute. This is still 95% unburned, but the 5% that is burned kind of gives it away. Uh, one more tree. I think this tree over here, as I was driving up looking for a place to flip around, I think I saw a bunch more burning on the bottom of this tree. So we'll go check it out and I'll, I'll cut it there. Just wanted to uh, prove this for the 1,375th time. All the unburned weeds everywhere. There's some plasma fired pieces of charcoal on the ground as we're walking up. And there you go. What more do you need? Looks like this piece broke right off the end. And it fits back together perfectly like Just like that. Like a fuse. There was too much energy going through it, so it snapped it and broke it off. Just like a fuse has a certain diameter of wire going through it. So that when it gets too much current flowing through it, it, it breaks the fuse. It's kind of what happened there. It's kind of what, like I was explaining earlier, I saw branches laying all over the ground with nothing but the circular end of them where they were attached to the tree burnt like a fuse that disconnects when it gets overloaded. So this is all charcoal. Somehow, instead of burning it from the inside out, it just burnt the outside there. Like I said, plasma fire kind of has a few different patterns that it produces. This one, because it's a giant stump, probably has some more burn patterns on it. But we'll call that good for now. I think we've established. So this summer, the Heber Valley, which is a mountain valley, about 45 minutes up the canyon from uh, Utah County and Salt Lake County, It filled with smoke three or four different times. And on the fourth time, the most recent time, it filled with smoke every day for a week from this fire that I'm showing you right here. The wind would change directions. And in the morning when we arrived to work, visibility is reduced to a couple hundred feet because the smoke is so thick. And then by noon, the wind would clear the valley out and you can see and breathe once again. And then the next morning, it would be the same thing. And that was all from this fire. That was only about 20 miles away from the work site, from the main Heber area. The other three or four times that the valley filled with smoke was from fires from California and other places. And that's not normal. My point is, I wonder how the people around stopped short a little bit. This used to be a giant tree. You'll be able to see big root holes where the roots were sticking in the ground right there. So the trunk used to actually be this big around. As you can see, it burned on the inside, unburned on the outside. There's the giant root holes. Let's see if we might be able to zoom in there. 
can see clear back in there. So that's one root hole. That's one here. Another large one here. And the whole tree stump was this big, this big around, all the way around here. And right over here we got another pretty fine example of plasmosis. You can see it's charcoal all on the inside right there. The angle and the lighting doesn't allow me to do it too well. But how do you get one spot that's burnt out like that with the unburnt weeds all around it? Plasmosis, that's how. And for those of you that like to claim that you already knew what took me six years to learn about the state of the human condition and why telling the children about a, an axe murderer running around the neighborhood probably isn't the best thing to do. It will stunt their growth and development. They aren't mature enough to deal with that. So you tell them some other story. And after six years, I discovered the true nature of the human condition. When they, their eye of raw engages and filters out that part of reality that's happening around them and prevents them from being able to see it because they're too scared. And some of you like to present, pretend, oh yeah, I already knew that too. Yeah, that's why I never did anything and showed people the world is burning from the inside out. Because uh, I already knew what it took you six years to learn. Yeah, that's why I sat on my ass and did nothing. I already knew that. You can claim that. You can pretend. You don't get to claim you have the serenity to accept the things you cannot change until you've conjured up the courage to change the things you can and have earned the wisdom to know the difference. And see what that gets you. You might want to uh, actually embrace the truth that there's something wrong with you, just as wrong with the people that can't see it, those that can see it because I showed them, and sat on their ass and did nothing while it was happening. <clears throat> That's not okay. There's something wrong with you. And so, when I was driving up here, first I want to say the night that I received that evacuation notice, from this mile marker to that mile marker on SR-150, emergency evacuation, get your shit and get out. I figured if I'm going up there to drive up there to see where this forest fire was, it'll be pretty obvious because the forest around you will be burned. Not the case. These are the kinds of fires where you'll see people's houses that are completely burnt to the ground and all of the trees and even the weeds around their house are left standing because it's electrical current running through the ground that decides to come up whenever and wherever it wants sporadically here and there and it really likes houses and cars even though there's rubber on the tires where you think well that's an insulator how could the electricity go through the rubber it doesn't need a direct connection it's microwave it radiates and it finds that metallic Material, the wiring in the houses, the nails, the piping, the metal on the car. And that night when I received the notification to get out, emergency evacuation notices the same night that the sun puked rainbows all over the earth. And the next day, over the next few days, we were seeing the most spectacular aurora borealis images from around the world all over here in the United States when you couldn't used to see the northern lights here in the US you had to go up north Alaska I don't think that's a coincidence and one of the directed energy weapons that are supposedly in existence that they can use to direct this kind of energy is called solar magnetic amplification causative configurator SMACC smack 
and those solar magnetics coincided with the Aurora Borealis on the night when I received that notification. So if they send out notifications saying, get your shit and get out, this, this fire is spreading so fast, it's out of control, you'd think you'd be able to see the burnt forest in the area where they told you it's moving faster than we can keep up with it. But you can't. Because it doesn't move in that way. In the way that normal fire does. It moves underground and pops up here and there. And that's the only way you can track it is by seeing a tree here on fire. Oh, now there's a tree over there on fire. Oh, now there's a tree over there on fire. Oh, shit, it's moving faster than we can keep up. Tell the people in this area to get the fuck out. Even though you can't see the forest fire other than this tree here and the tree there and the house over here that's burnt to the ground with everything surrounding it unburned. So... I'm willing to accept people that say it's all directed energy weapon. If your directed energy weapon theory can incorporate all these little fires here and there and there and here into it. And I've even thought of ideas like maybe they punch a hole in the magnetic field to charge their fiber optic lasers or direct that geomagnetic induction, that current. And then when they, they stretch the magnetic field apart and let those flux lines snap back together like a rubber band. And a fluctuation in the magnetic field creates a surge of ground current. Skywatch Media demonstrated this on two different graphs that are available online. One that measures the magnetic field and one that measures ground current. And he shows you that at the same moment there was a fluctuation in the magnetic field. Simultaneously there was a surge of ground current. Just the other day, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, come on. David Debine at Adapt 2030 was referencing, I believe it was Cuba that had their entire electrical grid go down. And he said maybe it was a surge of ground current that caused it. Like he's got a pretty good idea about what's going on too. Like those underground bunkers aren't going to do you much good. And I think I might have just saw one zip in front of the screen. And again, that could have been a fly. So I'm just going to record some of this while I walk and talk. As you can see, the bottom of this tree is highly burnt with all the unburned leaves around the bottom. On this one, only the back side of the tree over here is burnt. And on the front side is unburned. You can get a little closer look at those as we walk by. And some of you may think, oh geez, you're so angry. That's called righteous indignation and you've earned every bit of my wrath. But it's not my wrath you should be concerned about. See, six and a half years ago, this is the seventh summer that I've documented plasma fire. Six and a half years ago, I wasn't angry while making plasma fire videos. You can see this stump is burned all the way like it used to be a tree right there. No, when I made my first plasma fire video, I... This one's also burnt on the same side, only on the back side over here, unburned here. Only on the back side here, unburned there. Maybe we'll get a closer look at those on the way back. I've got some stuff that I'm walking towards up here. I just thought I'd do a little walk and talk. That one's the same thing. This one, only burned on the back side, unburned on the front side. It looks like this one's the same thing. Like the energy comes up through the ground and then goes the same direction out of all the trees. Electricity only burns where it enters and where it exits. So it's either entering the tree or exiting the tree on that facing side, just like moss only grows on one side. Whether it's aligning with the magnetics or the sun or something, somehow it only burns on the, the one side of the trees there. But just like Poppy and her videos that I showed you recently that uh, foretold becoming what rhymes with breath. See the straight line of burn right here? At the time, Poppy's words seemed meaningless and insignificant and nonsensical fine line between burn and unburn and then the catalyst happened the catalyst of the C19 
And then in hindsight, you can look back and appreciate the magnitude of what she really said and what she was really showing you. And similarly, many of the messages that I've delivered have fallen on deaf ears and only in hindsight after the catalyst, the capstone crescendo event occurs, will people be able to look back and recognize what it is I was saying. And I'm talking about the messages I delivered beyond just the plasma fire. Plasma fire is the fuck what you heard, believe what you see part of my message. The rest is like Jonah delivering a message to the people in the land of Nineveh that God's wrath is coming and you better change your ways or you're going to wish you did. Except here, in this land, people didn't. Burned on this side, unburned on that side. They were too comfortable. They enjoyed their conveniences so much, they couldn't be bothered. And only after the catalyst will some of the things that I said actually makes some sense. Until then, it's just like Poppy before C-19 making those videos telling you what was coming that rhymed with breath. The future looks strange to me, she said. Have they told you what's coming? I don't know if they're going to let me tell you. What rhymes with breath? That's all I'm going to say for right now. And her scary mask warnings. The, the icky babies told me the scary mask is coming. By the way, those those little ETs that were presented in the Mexican con congressional offices, I said that they were three feet tall. I think they were actually closer to 18 inches, making them far more like babies. And so I asked for a way to deliver something like the Nineveh reprieve for people not to have to experience the consequences of our actions and that of our governments that have taken action on our behalf and in our name. And that opportunity for the Nineveh reprieve for all of us was delivered through me. Except I was the only one that received it. The rest of you chose to reject it and continue going about your lives as if this is not happening. And as the walls are closing in, as these plasma fires are getting more and more frequent, closer and closer to home, it takes more and more cognitive dissonance to continue going through the motions of life as if this isn't happening. I would walk over there, but anyway, all of these branches, there's charcoal all over them intermittently mixed in with unburned wood. There's some other trees up here over the ridge that I wanted to go check out. Bigger ones that look like they're burned from the inside out. Let's go check out some of these. It's scattered all over and it's just a repeat of a repeat of a repeat. It looks like there's some bigger pieces up here. See the unburned spot here? How many times do I have to say it? Well, considering there's no new viewers to this channel, it's all been said. There's nothing more to say. There's nothing more to show. It's just a repeat of a repeat of a repeat. See, when I first started taking, when I first took my plasma fire, look how burnt this is on the end like charcoal, the whole thing. And that's a giant log, it comes up to my knee. And it looks like it broke right here in the middle. And it's unburned on the outside here and here, but burned on the inside here, and burned on the inside here. Pretty trippy. And it's probably, I haven't gone and looked yet, burnt on the end on the other end let's go check it out that's just the ability to recognize a pattern see the repetition and sure enough it's actually kind of hollowed out right here 
and it's got a little more burn action right there. But the log remains unburned in the middle, and this same pattern will result in smaller branches that you see all over the ground. Burnt on this end, and burnt on that end, and unburnt in the middle. All through here, all of this sagebrush that you see sticking up, in between the weeds that are in between the sagebrush, the sagebrush has charcoal on it. The weeds remain unburned. All of the sagebrush around here has the burnt scorching on it. I could show you a bunch more on every piece I pass, but what's the use, you know? Once you've seen the pattern, you don't need to see a thousand more examples. But what I was saying is that when I took my first plasma fire video, I figured, man, people are going to see this. And a week from now, everyone's going to be making their videos about it. No one will even remember where it came from or who started the discussion because it will capture their attention and they will spend their time paying attention to this because it's such a big fucking deal there's no way that anyone could ignore it I thought everyone else was like me I was wrong and that difference between us is part of the curation of consciousness on the consciousness farm plasma fire has been a filtration device separating people of a certain character from other people of a different character the repetition all over it's going to be more burned on the underside one two the big reveal oh what do you know what do you know All the unburnt weeds, burnt on the right side, unburnt on the left, and a solid ring of burning around the bottom, and then a stripe of burning that goes up along that side. Burned all the way around the back side, this is all charcoal. Clear up to right there. That's where the burning stops. And on back around. So that's the tree we were just looking at that's burned on the back side that you can't see from here. And this tree has the same thing. Unburned on this side, burned on the same side. So all of these trees are burnt on the side facing away from us right now. Yet the pine needles didn't go up. You know how flammable those are. And you have literal charcoal surrounded by the highly flammable materials. Here's another pattern. Burnt on the bottom side. It was like that, right? So it's burnt on the bottom side and on the ends. Burnt on the underside. Burnt on the underside. Should we keep going? There's got to be one that breaks the rule. This one did actually catch some of the pine needles on fire. But that's rare. The example we just showed you a second ago was surrounded all the way around, just like this, where you literally had pine needles touching the burned part, like right there. Burned on the underside.
pretty trippy stuff, but even trippier than this is the fact that people don't see it. And even trippier than that is the fact that people who were shown choose to continue acting as if it's not happening, carrying on with their life thereafter in the same exact way that they were before they were shown what's happening around them. That amazes me more than the plasma fire itself. And it's kind of logical, rational, and reasonable that the cultivation process, just like you plant a field, you grow it over the summer, right before the harvest, you do some things like uh, you shock the plant in order that it throws buds and throws seeds because it knows winter's coming. And to perpetuate the species into the future, I need to need to throw off some, some seeds. <clears throat> That there's a cycle, a yearly cycle that we're aware of in the farming process. Unburned, where is it? Unburned hair. Uh, slightly burned. There you go, it's unburned there. And that great holy harvest coincides with a cycle that is punctuated by this process that we're watching right now. That if you don't collect the seeds of consciousness that you planted on your consciousness farm, they're going to be wiped out anyway. And the cycle has a recurring cycle, just like every yearly season, summer, winter, spring, and fall. It may vary a little bit. Sometimes winter sets in a little earlier or a little later. But there's a predictable pattern and a cycle and a process. And here on the consciousness farm, it's winter time. And the Holy Harvest is in full swing. When I first went on my crazy journey to independence, telling you this is it, this is the end of Earth School. Earth School graduation day is in process. Judgment Day has arrived, but it's longer than 24 hours was the title of one of my videos. That was nine months before anyone even heard of C-19. And people were like, dude, you're tripping. It's not the end of the world. Now everyone knows. Whatever's coming is big enough that it's going to change everything about our world so much that it's unrecognizable if it even exists at all in the thereafter. The Great Reset wasn't a thing anyone had heard of. Everything that has happened between April 19th, 2019 and now is validation and confirmation that what I received wasn't a hallucination. The process that everyone in the world is now being put through is part of the same process that I was being put through. And like I said, April 19th, 2019, everyone's going to have to go through this and you're all getting a chance to show your true colors. Well, now everyone's going through it. And the true colors are being revealed. And it is in that way that Plasma Fire was a filtration device. It reveals your true colors shows the content of your character and the fiber of your being and what's important to you and what you're willing to do and what you're willing to sacrifice and what you're not willing to sacrifice. You're not willing to sacrifice your own comforts and conveniences. You'd rather sacrifice every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth and let them all burn alive before you're going to get up off your ass and say, hey guys, hey, maybe we should be paying attention to this. Hey, this is going to have a bigger impact on your life than that football game you're watching. Shut that fucking TV off. Come look at this. No. No, you couldn't be bothered. That's the content of your character. All right, I'm going to go check out some of these because I know these are exhibiting patterns I've seen before in a video, a few videos I titled something like Plasma Doing Crop Circles, D-E-W, Directed Energy Weapon. Plasma doing crop circles. It's an idea that Jamie Lee of A Plain Truth posited that crop circles are created through a technology where they shoot a laser through a stencil. And they lay the stencil out on the ground and then they use the laser, apply the laser energy and it bends the stalks. It doesn't break them. It bends them in a certain way where you can create the pattern. This one's all going to be all blowed out from the center. You can see all the limbs unburned. All these unburned limbs are blowed out from the center 
And actually these are all blowed that way. And these stocks right here are gonna be bent, not broken. Follow any one of these and you'll see that it's bent. One of the guys left a comment in one of my videos that I was making, making showing this feature, saying, I haven't seen bending like that since Kensington. In Pennsylvania, I think, where all the heroin junkies are bent over at the waist, standing around on the streets all hunched over, slumped over, bent over. So there's going to be some more. As you can see, the rest of these were all burnt. Oh, yeah, and it burns it all to a spike. All of these are burnt to a spike, a spike tip. For some reason, this is a, a pattern that I've identified before where it burns them all to a point. So as you're walking through a field full of these things that have been burnt in this way, one of them trips you and the other one impales you. It's somehow part of the weird feature of plasma fire, the way that it hones each one of these things, each one of these sticks, to a point. So I'm gonna have to be careful. You see all those spikes sticking up, ready to impale you? And it makes the bark come off. You can see that the bark is what's burned here and it's coming off. Here I'm just gonna jump back to this one I made uh, quite a few years ago called Doing Crop Circles to show you the same feature of the bending, how it softens the wood and bends it and then rehardens it. It's like Jay Dreamer says, about the plasma apocalypse, that it loosens the bonds, the molecular bonds, and people get stretchy powers. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Now I'm gonna go through here and show you how they are laid over at the base. They're not broken, they are bent like a crop circle. You're gonna see crop circles. Here's one example. See the same burn pattern on here as everywhere else. Those are actually bent. Those are about two or three inch diameter. That's just the start. I'm gonna show you something that actually form a circle. Ilana Freeland and Deborah Tavares can explain much better than I why these bend like that. But again, hold that thought, I'm gonna show you the real crop circles. But just so you know, it's not an isolated incident. They all bend. Leaves everywhere, unburnt branches, bent branches. Hold that thought, coming up on the circle. I'm gonna show you some detail on this tree where it burnt in the middle and split. This one sizzled down to a nub like what's on the Conrad Ranch, but let's go ahead and check this out. Ever seen anything like it? That is a big, big tree. And the line here between the inner core wood burning and the outer wood unburnt is what makes it valuable for a teaching tool. Like that. This wood that you're looking at right here on this tree is bent. That wood in under normal conditions is not capable of bending that far. That's the outer shell of hardwood. A tree is made of two different types of wood. The core wood is soft, moist, and pliable. The outer shell is dry, brittle, rigid, and hard. And that that you're looking at right there is bent. And it goes up and up and up. You can see right here, it's burnt out on the inner core here.
and again, unlike anything we've ever seen. So, before I run out of memory, I'll be back. But I just figured I had to show you that one. I couldn't just walk by that one, or I'm definitely punch drunk. Also, notice all the spikes, as I was pointing out in the other video. Limbs burned to a point. I'll show you a bunch of more. It's hollowed out and split just like this, further up the hill, but that'll probably be tomorrow. I'm about to run out of memory. So before I do... I know it all kind of looks repetitive, but this is new area. I haven't filmed just yet. This kind of stuff is everywhere. I'm not going to wait for the focus to come in. There's a burn unburn line up there. A chunk taken out here, a chunk taken out there. And as soon as I get that bacon camera app working, I'll be able to take much better video. I want to point out the spiked motif that you see here. It happens everywhere. Oh, and notice how it's not burnt on the back side of this, and it is burnt on the front side. Again, those are all the signatures that makes this valuable. Here you can see all these lines on the ground, one there, one there, one there. These are the red ash remnants. You can see this one, and it leaves the pile of red dirt where that was a stick, that was a stick, that was a stick, and it turns them into piles of red dust. This was a whole great big branch right here. Turned to dust, like Night of the Comet. And that hole right there is where... I believe the red dust might be the iron and the minerals. It doesn't even leave ash behind where the tree limbs on the ground were. It just leaves this red dust. Just like Night of the Comet. Where that tree came out of. More of the red dust here and everywhere. I'll show you plenty more of those. Notice the burn unburn lines on this grove of trees. And every grove of trees all around me. everywhere. On that telephone pole, I can see the burn signatures from here, and clearly it's fallen over into the other. My bad, maybe it was placed there as a brace, we'll see. Now this hole, you'll see the barbed wire that was wrapped around the tree that was here that got vaporized. I could jump down in that hole. It's five feet, six feet maybe. And you can see the uh, barbed wire that wrapped around the tree before it was vaporized. But you know, like that guy in Park City, you would, would you like to know how this has happened? I ain't got time. <clears throat> I'm sure most people don't have time. <clears throat> Go about your business. and see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, yeah, we'll see what happens. There's the vaporized hole at the bottom of the tree that we just looked at. Notice the unburnt leaves everywhere. Thank you. 
Got to make my way through all these unburnt leaves so you can see the bottom of this branch. Notice how it burnt on this side of these branches, including that one, but all of them seem to not burn on the back side. Like that. That's what they all look like. Burnt on one side, not burnt on the other side, and it's the same side on all of them. Like the plasma came from beneath and from this direction and didn't burn all those weeds that are directly above. I'm not moving it, that's directly above. So there's no flame, zero flame. Flameless forest fire field activated combustion synthesis. More Tesla coil bouncing around in the trees over here. More holes in the ground here where there was once a tree. That's why they cleared the roads in paradise, of all the trees on both sides. There's no way anyone's going to come back and think that was a forest fire. Three minutes worth of coverage on something that deserves 30, but I only have about three minutes of coverage left. So notice, this bush was split in two, and all these branches bent, and all the unburnt leaves that means the electromagnetic frequencies of the directed energy weapon came down and split this sucker right there, laid half of it over, left the other half untouched. Hold that thought. And make sure you remember that while you're holding the thought. Same thing happened to this one. Same thing happened to this one, but it's laid out in a circle. Notice from the center, all of the branches are pointing outward in a circular pattern. These go these way. Those go that way, those go that way, these go that way. Unburnt leaves all over the ends. These are the unburnt leaves. Hold that thought. Unburnt leaves from the middle, right out to the end. Same thing, hold that thought. Gonna show you a lot more examples of the same thing. These are bent that way, unburnt on the ends, as we walk through here. Again, these are bent with unburnt leaves all over the ends. Those are the unburnt leaves. That's bent, not broken. Electromagnetic frequencies do this. And as we walk through here, I'm going to point out which ones are bent in which direction. Shouldn't be too hard to see though. These all point this direction with all the unburned leaves here. Those point that direction. These point that direction. These are bent that way. These are all bent that way and you'll find a spot where it splits here in just a sec. Okay, this is kind of the spot where it splits. You see these are bent that way. Those are bent that way. That bush right here is split right in the middle. So you can see how this bush, some of them went that way and some went that way. This bush, they're all pointed towards us. Some went right, some went left. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to explain how these all end up burnt. Back to the Yellow Lake plasma fire that happened near Heber in the last couple weeks. See that the bark is what's burned here and it's coming off. Let's go find some more of these patterns where it lays it out from the center. Sometimes it'll bend them in a, like right down the middle of the bush. These ones will be bent that way. These ones will be bent that way. These are features I've shown in previous videos uh, showing the plasma action. And I think we'll be able to see some more similar patterns. But as you can see, 
highly burned, unburned. So this is another uh, example of plasma. This looks like this is new growth since the fire. These little shoots that are sticking out. Holy shit, I just about tripped. I was coming over here to show you the water. How can you have such an extreme fire in a swamp land? Well, there are such things, like in Florida, there's plasma fire in the Everglades, in the Brazilian rainforest. This used to have a bunch, a bunch of these uh, branches sticking out that have all been burned down to a nub. Spikes, spikes everywhere. In a, in a regular fire, it doesn't burn everything down and leave 6 to 8 to 12 inches at the ground level. It burns it all the way down to the ground. In this fire, you can see everything clearly has some sort of remainder sticking up from the ground. Fire doesn't work that way. Ready to impale. I should keep my eye out for some good pieces for... For lacquering, but yeah, look at all the spikes everywhere. You trip and fall on that shit, you're gonna know it. <laughs> it's like a Charlie Brown Halloween special where the trees are all spiky and shit. Yeah, demon trees. You could definitely impale yourself on some of these branches. So I think I'm gonna pause it until I find, here's some more bent ones. Oh, it's all soggy. Well, that one's kinda, these ones here you see are kinda bent, but they're burnt on the underside, but they're definitely bent. And laying over, man, it's getting soggy. And laying over right here, those used to be pointed up, not down. So they're definitely bent. I'm gonna pause it and look for some more cool features. See these branches that are sticking up right here and then snap and go down right there. This happened during the plasma fire. You can see this wood is bent. It's not flexible, I'm trying. It's like it softens the wood. Oh. And that curvature is burned right into the wood. It's not soft and pliable and flexible. And it also breaks the branch, just like the fuse that gets snapped because it's got too much energy flowing through it. We've got a few branches here that are snapped. You can see that one. This one's bent. Here you go, perfect bender. From here, all the way back over to there. Yeah. So it literally like softens the molecular bonds of the wood, making it more pliable and malleable during the fire, bends it, and then after the fire's gone, it rehardens again. This, if I tried to bend it back straight, it would snap. If I tried to bend this straight back up, it would snap just like that. If I tried to bend it back straight, it would snap again. And as you can see, it's burnt along one side. Damn it. Charcoal on this side. Unburnt on that side. I've got a few pieces that I've taken home and lacquered like this, where there's like three or four of them sticking up from a base and all three or four of them are burnt on one side, unburnt on the other, just like you're seeing here. Fine line between the, the burned side and the unburned side.
kind of got to raise it up to show you the other side because it's so bent. But it didn't used to be this bent. And so there's like a softening of the wood that happens. I almost kind of want to keep this one. Maybe just part of it. I'll throw it out here, see if maybe I remember it on the way back. So this one demonstrates how it throws the bark off of it. Down here it's charcoal and black. Up here the bark is still brown. But as you can see, the bark is coming off. And all the trees... In Spanish Fort Canyon, where I took my first plasma fire, are this color. They look like aspens because all the bark has fallen off. This is a pattern I've identified before, and I identify it as being related to phototropism. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but basically the, the cells inside the plant expand, fill up with water, and contract. And this is how a flower opens its petals in the morning, closes them at night, or how a sunflower follows the sun throughout the day. The cells in the plant can work like muscles by expanding and contracting in this way. When you put a 5G cell tower right next to a tree, the tree loses all of its bark because the electromagnetic radiation of the cell tower next to it causes this... I think it's phototropism. Causes this process where it inflates and deflates all of its cells with water to go into overdrive and it flexes the bark right off of the tree. And that's what we're seeing with all of this. Even the parts where it's not burned. Though on some parts it is burned, like right. Hopefully it'll focus right there for me. You can see how it's highly burnt here. I'll burnt that. And a bunch of spots along this have the bark falling off of the plant. And some of it is burnt to charcoal. But even the spots that aren't burnt to charcoal, this is one of the effects of plasma fire, and it's from the electromagnetic radiation, I believe, not necessarily from the heat of the fire, from the electro part of it. This tree's demonstrating the same thing. Oh man, it's getting super soggy. My feet are gonna be fucking soaked. Pretty weird, huh? Flexes the bark right off during the plasmosis process. Some of the bark down here is scorched, but the bark up here, that's what it used to look like. I think these are in fact aspens. Can you see it here in this one? We got bending like Kensington going on over here. Oh, crap. Drop me. I'll set it down for just a sec. While we check out the bending. This branch used to be pointed straight up. One that's now pointed horizontal here. Used to be pointed straight up like this one. Something softened it, bent it, and then it re-hardened and re-solidified. It's now too hard to try to bend it back up. Or that happens. See if I can twist it off there. Hee -ya. I think you get the point. That's where the bend starts and it did like a full 90. And there's others that are doing the same thing. This one right here. It does have some burning on the branch. Right here. Come on, work with me camera, must focus. It's kind of not working with me very well. But this used to be pointed up, not out. And it's a pretty big branch. 
So it's like it, it bent it right here by softening the wood and then the wood hardens up again. It literally, this is what J-Dreamers talks about during the plasma apocalypse. Some people get superpowers like the stretchy people in the, uh, the Incredibles because the molecular bonds of the material itself, sometimes it hardens the bonds and petrifies things. Sometimes it loosens the bonds. With this wood, it loosens the bonds while it's burning and then they re-solidify and harden thereafter. Stretchy powers activate. But yeah, you can see a bunch of these branches that are now pointed horizontal there that used to be pointed up. There's just so much water and it's so soggy. I don't really want to go over there. I think you kind of got the point. I see some more over there. Right here. You can see some that are curving over this direction. And like I said in some of my previous videos, there'll be a bush, uh, a bundle of these sticks, like this one right here, split right in the middle. Half of them bent over that direction, half of them bent over that direction. Like a magnetic flux line, you know, the flux lines that go around the earth and curve, almost like something's hitting right there, a magnet. And the flux lines curve, and the wood follows the flux lines. In these burns, in these fires, the burn follows the grain of the wood. If the grain of the wood, if the wood grows and does a corkscrew, the burn line will do a corkscrew with the wood. It's following the grain of the wood on the inside. Like electricity goes down a copper wire, it goes down the grain of the wood. Man, why does my camera keep glitching? Maybe there's high levels of uh, plasmosis still up in here. Did you see it glitching? Don't be glitching, man. Don't be glitching. Man, I just got soaked clear up to the ankle coming over here to check out this one. How weird is that? So this is a tree that was sticking up. This might actually be the branch. Holy crap, I need to find dry ground. So this big branch was probably sticking up off of that right there. It fell over... It's hard to say. Let's just check out the evidence. Look at this big concave groove. All burnt out up in there. Pretty deep. We're now inside the burnt out log. And then we got some more weird burn pattern action going on here. But I really like what's going on right here. You can see there's some sort of interaction. The way it burnt out the main log around this piece right here was acting like a conductor and it had some sort of radiation going around it. And that's why it burnt out this bigger spot around it. And you can see all the way around the whole thing. I'd like it to focus a little better. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. How trippy is that? So yeah, it's like this little part of this stump was acting like a lightning rod, burning out this part around it. I'm not sure how well this is coming through with the, with the angles that I'm trying to show. More glitching going on. That's not me, I'm not shaking you guys. That glitchiness is also something that uh, Custodian Files talks about something that actually happens when these little UIP dragons are all around. So maybe I got dragons surrounding me right now. Unburned. Burned down to a much smaller diameter. Just the trippiest patterns of plasmosis. Don't be glitching on me, dragons. I'm trying to film a plasma fire here. 
and my dragons are messing with me. Alright, I think we're good for this spot. I'm gonna have to go change my socks and shoes. Into a plasma fire and produce burn patterns that. Since I don't do this very often, I'll just go ahead and, and do it upright. Unburn, burn, unburn, burn. All right. What else we got? Looks like this one is all burnt on the inside. Were those pine needles sitting in the middle while it burned? Or have those all fallen within the last few days? I'd say there's too many here. And there is no tree straight above it. So it's almost like those pine needles were sitting in there while it burned. And you got hunters running around with their camo and their orange. You'd think word would spread. You'd think people would notice. You'd think that they would care. You'd think that they would talk about it and you'd be wrong. They don't care. They don't notice. They don't talk about it. That stump we were just checking out with all the pine needles in the middle. There is no tree next to it that could drop pine needles into the center in that degree, that many of them, there's not even that many on the ground. That was like a half inch thick. So I'm pretty sure those pine needles, I mean at the rate pine needles fall and it would take wind. By the way, there's this other stump right here next to it. With all the burn, unburn action on it too. But that's incredible. I'm pretty sure those were in there, especially the older ones down low here. It's like there's literal charcoal. Charcoal pieces underneath the pine needles. I don't think those all fell within the last couple of days. Granted, this fire's been burning for a couple of weeks, but still. When there's no tree right above it, the closest trees are 20, 30 feet away. Pretty sure that burned with the pine needles inside of it. And that's why it could be related to what uh, Grundvig, James Grundvig, calls field activated combustion synthesis and why these fires have so much smoke because there's no actual combustion it sizzles like if you put a hot dog in the microwave and put it on for five minutes or however long it takes for that hot dog to come out black and charcoaled like this that hot dog never combusts and goes into flames it just sizzles Likewise, that log could just sizzle without actually combusting into flame, creating the charcoal beneath creating the charcoal beneath the pine needles without ever catching the pine needles on fire. And why it would create so much smoke is when you're starting a campfire, there's one of those spots that just bleeds through, the electricity just kind of pokes up through. When you're starting a campfire, 
it smokes and smokes and then once it combusts and flames appear the smoke goes away in these fires the flame doesn't appear it just sizzles <clears throat> because it's not actual combustion, it's combustion synthesis. It's like combustion and it turns the wood to charcoal without a flame. That could be how those pine needles are sitting in that, sitting in that tree that burned. And yet the pine needles didn't burn. The tree was conducting the electricity. All the all the energy was moving through the tree. Ooh, now that looks like a cool one. We gotta go check out. Causing it to turn to charcoal. But the tree wasn't flaming. And any flame that does happen, it's kind of like it gets sucked back into the log. <laughs> because electricity is always drawn towards other electricity. So two ideas that kind of stem from this is one, that it sucks the flame back in to the tree. The flame fire is a weak plasma. And any flame that escapes the main energy running up and down the tree, if a flame kind of escapes and starts to poke out, the electricity of the flame, because it's a weak plasma, draws it back down in with the mainstream of electricity. So maybe that's why you can see flames. And what the hell happened here? Did this happen before or after the fire? Because the dirt looks fresh, right? The dirt looks freshly churned. I'm not sure. So the second idea, the first one is these burn flamelessly where you can see some flame but then it kind of sucks the flame back in to the tree and that's how in the video fiery sermon from the valley of the shadow you can see an unburned branch sticking out from a charcoaled trunk because any flame that comes out instead of reaching up and maintaining for a while and burning this other branch gets sucked right back into the tree because you can see flames during these fires, but it leaves the aftermath burn pattern where it appears that it burned flamelessly. The other thing I wonder is if I start a normal fire with a match and a lighter, does it turn into a plasma fire? Because that weak plasma, which fire has always been determined to be by all scientists, they say fire is a weak plasma. So the fire itself has an electrical component. Does it draw the ground current up to it? By lighting a fire, it creates an electrical charge up here. And does that connect with the electrical charge in the ground and suddenly turn that fire that was lit with a match into a plasma fire and produce burn patterns that clearly have electricity involved? Is that why I haven't been able to discover a normal fire in the last six years? Because even a normal fire turns into a plasma fire because of the increased ground current that we have. Start a normal fire, it draws the ground current up to it. And it turns it into a plasma fire, leaving the burn patterns of electricity on the ground, even though you just started it with a match or a lighter. Just to reiterate a point that I've already made a couple times, as you can see, there's a bunch of plasma burned logs and stuff around here. Here, there, and everywhere. All these logs, they all have the burn patterns on them, charcoaled up. This is some highly flammable material. And it's all over the ground. Unburned everywhere. I'm surrounded by 10 or 15 logs and trees. Even that tree over there has got the burn going up the trunk. Every big log you see in the area, any and every big log you see in the area or stump has charcoal on it but all of the space between the logs has highly flammable material that didn't get touched. Ergo, the Yellow Lake fire has officially been determined by experts, the one expert that uh, seems to give a shit, to be a plasma fire. This one's got a cool burn pattern. 
the channel that's burned out. Right there. I don't think that was just the shape of the log before it started burning. Because I've seen this pattern so many times. I, I showed a, a, at least probably a couple examples of this same burn pattern in this video that I'm making here and now. Where it hollowed out the inside of the log all along here. the angle's not great on that but yeah everywhere you see wood charcoal right next to this so if there was any flame coming out of this it would have caught that on fire and that exists all around here every piece of wood you see on the ground has charcoal and it's all embedded within this highly flammable leaves and and weeds so there's a thousand examples you can spot from around here. Leaves and weeds. Charcoal. Plasma fire works in mysterious ways. Here you got the charcoal with the leaves and weeds directly above it. We're looking straight down on it now. And you have to look through the highly flammable leaves to get to the charcoal. So that's literally charcoal wood that's burned beneath such dried out leaves. And there's no way this stuff was green when it burned. It only burned over the last couple of weeks and it just barely went out within the last couple of days because we got some rain. You can see that this wood's been here long enough that the weeds have kind of grown around it. Again, looking straight down on it from above, flames go straight up. And you can see it's left an impression in the ground right there, so it's been there for a while. It didn't just roll over there, it was there for a long time. Embedded within all these leaves. I'll try not to sound like a broken record, but I uh, can't be overstated. It's a very important point. So just again, to sound like a broken record, all the, all the unburnt weeds everywhere, and all these stumps, this one, every one over there, like I told you, every stump, every large piece of wood, has the charcoal all over it. We'll just buzz through these real quick here, and you can see the charcoal and the unburned on each one of them. Burn charcoal. These ones that are literally laying in the weeds. Charcoal, charcoal everywhere. Here's some charcoal. There's some charcoal everywhere. Some charcoal, charcoal. Embedded in with in highly flammable weeds. E I E I O. And on his farm he had a plasma fire. E-I-E-I-O. Oh, there's one. I think we found the one that doesn't have. Why not? I don't know. But everything else matches the, the pattern. So when I say like every single large log. This one's probably got the end of it burnt. Yep. Following the pattern. I'm a pattern seeking primate. It's the only thing I got on a monkey is that I can spot patterns a little better than the rest of the monkeys. E -I -E -I -O. So that was about it. I think I'm gonna pause it again because I could just keep going through here. Oh, this one's kind of tight. Burned out the middle. 
You can see this is the middle, this is the outside that's unburned for the most part. Right up in there. Yet it's got this stick sticking out that's burnt on the inside, everything on the inside burnt, leaving a flimsy thin layer of the outer. Like how how do they not spot it? How do other people not see these patterns and, and talk about it around the water cooler at work? That's the most bizarre part to me. By far. Far surpasses the plasma fire phenomenon. Is the phenomenon of people being unable to see it. So I, I think it kind of points to that idea James True talks about. Ooh, this one's kind of cool. Look at all the burnt part in, in the middle. This burnt strip around here that goes about eight inches into Yet the outside is unburned. The inside's charcoaled. And it's burnt out this strip right here. Oh, and then it and then it's got some other cool looking shit around the corner. It's almost like slowly moving allows you to see it a little better. You'd think people would see this and say, wait a minute, fire don't do that. The fuck did this? Like a neutron bomb or something. Neutron bomb action. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of them are charcoal. With all the weeds in between. You can hear the weeds that I'm crunching as I go through. Adds a good effect. Yeah. So once you've got a few hundred examples showing the exact opposite of what you've experienced in your normal campfire, where it takes a lot of kindling to get a big giant log burning, and this stuff right here burns like real easy and it's directly above and even touching just like those pine needles inside that tree trunk it's touching you have to move it out of the way to see the rest of the charcoal if I put a lighter to that right now this whole thing would go up real fast Yet these logs are turned to charcoal. This fire works like in the opposite way of fire as we've known it. Yet I'm still the only one who sees it. Here's another one of those channels that burned in the that have burned in the log. Okay, I'll wait until I find something cool again. I won't just keep repeating the same shit, but yeah, when you see all this charcoal embedded within all this unburnt material, yeah, gotta throw a flaming cow patty into the mix. It's 
what it appears to be charcoal cow patty and a little bit of charcoal pine cone mmm flaming cow pies I'm like hey guys get in we're going for a ride gonna go through a paradigm shift Everyone's like, no, I don't want to go paradigm shift. Well, too bad. You're all coming anyway, whether or not you want to come. So just, just enjoy the ride, man. No. I'm going to close my eyes and plug my ears and hear no plasma fire and see no plasma fire and smell no plasma fire. Keep going about life as it's always been. Mind over matter. As long as I don't mind, it don't matter. And I'm going to just ignore it. Okay. See how that works out. Good luck. Now this one's kind of trippy and I really hope the angle of light lets me show you the fractal burning pattern on the back side. That goes all the way up the tree. Not sure how well you can really see it. Maybe, uh, maybe if I get right in alignment with this on, there we go. That's Lichtenberg burning. Fractal burn patterns. Fractal burns. With a fine line between the burn and unburn going up. But the fractal burns are the coolest part. Maybe if I can get a little bit of better than angle. There we go, I think that's actually coming through pretty good. <clears throat> that's the kind of burn pattern that happens uh, when they hook a battery or 110 or 220, they hook electricity. They put a nail in each end of a board and slather the middle part with baking soda to make it more conductive. Put a nail at both ends and the positive wire on one end and the negative wire on the other end. And it creates all these fractal patterns that are bizarre looking. Oftentimes it looks like a branching uh, tree branches or the forking of a river or something. But that's definitely what that is. Electricity. The evidence thereof. Mmm. Fractal burns. Pretty cool. So this tree has a burn area right here in the middle where it's almost like the two forks were working like a, a tuning fork. And hardcore burnt out that part in the middle. Fine line right here between burn and unburn. It wants to, it don't want to focus in the right spot. Come on, show us the thing. Where it chewed out this part real hard and this part real hard. And yeah, the angle of light just ain't really working very well to reveal it. But otherwise, the tree is whole up here, perfectly round, perfectly round. All the way to right here and right here it burns out a big chunk here and a big chunk here and then they're both whole and perfectly round and unburned on the bottom again and then perfectly fine up top the other weird thing is it only burned on that side not on this side up till that point right there and it's burnt 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 and then it's back to being unburnt 
So right here between the two forks, it created some sort of amplification that took a, a third of that and a third of that stock. <clears throat> Pretty weird, huh? This side actually shows it maybe a little better because of the uh, the angle of light and everything. Then once you get back up here, they're both perfectly round again. Other than down here. Plasma fire works in mysterious ways. This grove of trees right here demonstrates they're all burned on the back side, unburned on the front side that's facing us. And that is pretty much what you see on all the telephone poles these days. All of them have this discoloration at the bottom. And oftentimes they'll have one strip of discoloration going up one side. So here we'll just walk around and show you this is what the unburnt side looks like. With the reddish bark and hopefully the lighting will help show that burnt on the back side. Every one of these is the same. Burnt on the back side. Unburnt on this side. Unburnt on this side. Burnt on the back side. Each one of these trees. Yeah, this one kind of shows it a little better. Unburnt on this side. Highly burnt on this side. Circle around, back to the unburned spot. Burnt on this side. Unburnt on this side. Back around to the burn side. Same thing on all of them. Huh? You see? And most of them are only burnt up to a certain height. Like right here is where it stops on this one. About the same height on all of them. Right there's about where it stops on that one. This one, the light's in our, our eyes, but right about there. This is also what you saw in paradise. A lot of the trees were only burned up to about 20 feet. Whether it's 20 foot or three feet, or like all of the telephone poles, just about everywhere you look these days, it's that high, like the earth has an aura of energy, energy radiating up to a certain height. During a plasma fire, that height grows. And that energy comes up through the tree and goes out a certain direction. I think all of these had it coming up and going out that direction. <clears throat> this is a, also a, a pattern seen in paradise. See how it's missing a bunch of it right here? Like this whole tree used to come down like right here, straight down, but it's carved all this out, completely out, yet left that part unburned. And then did a similar thing right here. Right there, you can kind of see how it's carved it out right here. Yeah. Yeah. If I can keep my shadow from getting in the way. Pretty cray cray.
and then it's done a similar thing right over here. Right here, it's kind of carved it out right here. It used to come straight down and it carved a big chunk out right there. Yeah. So this stump, ooh, this stump really took a beating. Got a bunch of different little carved out spots on it. So yeah, look around your neighborhood. You'll see that all the telephone poles look about like that. Sometimes the bottom is dark like this. Sometimes the bottom is white, but oftentimes it's dark. And the rest of the telephone pole is dry. It drains all of the creosote oil down to the bottom like it warms it up. It's not hitting it hard enough to burn it, but it warms it up, draws all the creosote oil down to the bottom, and the top part of the wood is left bare and dry and brittle, and that's the purpose for the creosote, is to protect the wood from weather rot. So it always stays moist. All the telephone poles everywhere now look like that, with a discoloration spot at the bottom, with very few exceptions, all the telephone poles. In fact, just like we showed you that stump a second ago that had a bunch of little spots carved out of it while leaving the other wood unburned, I've got a video of a telephone pole in near Crystal Hot Springs, Honeyville, Utah, where it's got a big chunk carved out of the telephone pole that's burnt. The rest of the telephone pole is completely unburnt, but it's missing a big chunk, about 50% of it is gone right there and they've got a brace, a metal rod on this side with a band that wraps around the tree here and a band that wraps around the tree here like a brace when you break your leg. But this is to brace the telephone pole because it's missing a big half moon, half circle chunk out of one side of it. So here we are at uh, whatever that is north and 600 west in Tremont and I'm headed towards the hot springs over there freeways right over there and as I'm driving by I saw this now I can show you these every day and I really don't want to but this one's unique enough it definitely deserves a take and look at and my screen I got a lot of glare so this is just a telephone pole or a power line pole and you can see how far in it's burnt right there and if you so that's what it is just a regular old pole but right here you can see you can see that this is visible enough from a pretty major road that I shouldn't be the only one showing you this it's cognitive dissonance at its finest man the fact that people drive by this and they don't call the power company and say, hey, I think you got an electrical short. It's over here shorting out on the power line. Because <laughs> when you drive the by from the road, this is the road right here, so you're from that angle where you can clearly see. That sucker looks like it's about to topple over. It's missing so much on the bottom right there. Maybe that's what this metal reinforcement is about. They're like, oh, let's just uh, throw a little brace on there. Maybe it's my shadow. I can't hardly see anything on the screen. But I'll just go ahead and circle around it and call it a video. That's about the bottom where it stops. Here, look how much is missing from right here, man. I mean, that's a big old chunk missing out of that pole. Huh? Yar.
So, off to the hot springs we go. And I got some more babble and bloviation to do when I get there. Yeah, because the shadow's right in line with it. If the shadow wasn't right there, I'd be able to get right here to the edge where you can see the profile of it, how much is really missing there. But I think you can probably get a pretty good idea. throw some links in the description of some of the pieces that I've lacquered up where it features the burn patterns that, that per, for instance this one shows you the spiral burn and I'll just throw those links in the description for anyone who's interested in checking that out you could really see the spiral burn that starts right here up top And goes down in and through the piece so it's almost like impossible to see unless you're at the right angle and get someone to spin it for you <laughs> this video this video is going to be about directional flow of energy which I believe I, I can prove fairly well that the energy goes up and through the plant and out one side in these three branches and in these two branches I'm going to show you that now so it starts out as a thumb size branch here and then once it starts to burn it's full full circle right here but quickly burns down to a thin reed down at the end where it looks like reeds that grow out of water but all three of these branches start out a full-size branch about the size of your thumb now they only burn on the one side Ooh, going all the way up to the very tip they only burn on the one side and on that same side that they have burned you can see this line where it hasn't begun to burn it down and charcoal it, but it is still just remaining a full thumb size branch. You can see that this burn line, along with one on this branch as well, is in alignment with the burn side of the branch. So I believe the electricity, this is the part that was in the ground. So the electricity comes from the ground up through the branch and out one direction or another. In this case, it was out that direction. Because you can see, there we go, we'll just twist it a couple times. You can see the burn line that runs generally out this side. Now I'm gonna show you both instances. I'm, sh I'm gonna show you somewhere the burn line actually spirals around the branch. So you can see that it's not actually going through the branch and exiting in one specific direction it's going through the branch and following a specific set of fibers as they curl around the branch such as these and this one you can see that it does two full 360 corkscrews as it goes up through that branch there's one of them and the other ones down here so on this one it does two full 360 corkscrews and the burn line follows the corkscrews. That's not the case. So on this one, we see the same effect with the burn line on both of these branches going up both branches in the same direction. This one and that one. You can see which way the direction was. And on this one, you can see if I could focus the burn line is very straight going up both sides
But it's as I was sitting here looking at this, notice it's light on this side and dark on this side. And it looks just like those power poles where they're burnt on one side. In this case, it's dark on the left and light on the right. They're burnt on one side. This one actually came from my neighbor's house where I'm gonna show you there were two telephone poles only burnt on one side. That side overlaps a little bit. This side runs perfectly along the manufactured edge like a shadow line. And that's what I'm showing you here. It burns exactly like a shadow line on a square post or on a round post. In this case, you can see that it's perfectly unburned on this side, right to the edge, all the way down. Perfectly burned on this side, right to the edge, all the way up. So this burn line runs perfect along the manufacturer's edge. Okay. This other one overlaps that manufacturer's edge by about an inch, but still runs a straight line all the way down. And over, overlaps that manufacturer's edge by an inch. So, in the case of understanding this as a shadow, the light is coming from either here, the light bulb, or there, doesn't really matter. It's coming from that direction and hitting this round pipe, whether it be a telephone pole or a stove pipe. Creating a shadow line exactly 90 degrees off of the light source. So it lights up this side of a round post and right there at the edge, the light beams miss it and go right by it. So there's a straight line. If that were a burning hot light coming from that direction, it would burn on that side with a straight line coming down. That's exactly what happened to two of the telephone poles we're about to look at at my neighbor's house with the straight line burn where I took this post from that you're also gonna see in the same video at my neighbor's house where the two telephone poles are. This post matches what you would see as a light shadow as well. From this direction, you're only gonna hit with the light one side. Anywhere from right here, you're hitting both sides with the light, clear over to here. You're still hitting both sides with the light, pretty much evenly. Right here, you're only hitting this side with the light. If the light's coming directly from the camera, you're only hitting one side now, two sides from this point, clear over to this point. You're still hitting two sides with the light. From right there, it's directly in alignment with the light source if the light is the camera and you're only hitting one side. In the case of this burn, you hit both sides. Anywhere from right here, you would only burn this side. If it was a light coming from the outside, you would only burn this side. From this point, you'd be burning both sides with the light coming from the camera if it was a red hot light. Clear over to here. If it was a red hot light, you'd still be burning both sides. Right there, you would only be burning this side. And I believe I can tell you exactly where the angle of light came from because it overlapped this side by an inch, but it burned this side perfectly did not overlap at all. Right down the manufacturer's edge, up and down. So, that means the light source came from, instead of directly in alignment with this corner, a little bit more this way. That's why it overlapped this edge and left this edge perfect. Because the light source, if you will, and I don't think it was a light source, I think it's the grounding source is directly in alignment with the camera. But instead of being directly in alignment with this corner, it was over this way, just about right here. 
This is the angle this square board got hit from if it were a light from the outside. That's why it overlaps this edge a little bit and leaves that edge perfect because it's just a little bit left of center. Instead of center with the corner to burn both sides evenly, it hit from this angle if it were an external light source coming from the outside. I believe it's an internal light source coming from the inside grounding outward usually towards the sun. Like I told the old man down here that was a plasma. See this pole over here? Oh. See this pole here? Burnt 100% on that side. Not on this side, you see? You following me? See the line? See the line? Likewise here. Just, uh, board. So this is the day my neighbor's house burned with a plasma fire and that square post is sitting there right next to those two round telephone poles. The next day when I came back and made a second video, that square post was gone. They hit it with one of the fire trucks to knock it over and break it or cut it off and threw it over in the bushes underneath the bushes. Why do you think they did that? Now this is a small, a small piece of wood that actually kind of runs along the length of the uh, telephone pole, and it kind of separated the burn. But this is a video I took the next day when that square post was already gone. This is bizarre how quickly they're cleaning it up. Like yesterday I showed you how the ground was black here and the weeds were still left. Anyway, what I'm gonna start showing you right here is that this piece of molding is split black on this side, unburned on that side all the way up, just like the rest of the uh, foam pole. And it covers a wire. That wire is the dividing line between burned and unburned and it stops right about there. The burn on the left stops right about there. You see this pole? It's got the exact same burn. Burn on the left, unburn on the right, but you don't see a wire going up the middle here. But you do see the same burn on the left, unburn on the right. Okay. Now let's ask a logical question. If this burned this hot, but that's what I was uh, mainly coming to show you. Here's the wire that goes clear down to the ground. And I assume that's grounding wire. I'm not exactly sure, but that's what is covering. And right here you can see the burn. Ooh, uh. The burn took out the left half of this piece that right here, it starts to, there's still wood left there. Just barely though, I can kind of knock it out. But as you can see, just like the pole, it's burned on one side, I'm burned on the other. Fire doesn't do that. That's electricity. That's being electrocuted. And I propose, I propose that it's coming from the ground up. Be Links are in the description, and inside of the description of each one of those videos are more links related to the content of that video. Like a Russian nesting doll, there's plenty of leads that I've left plenty of breadcrumbs along the trail for anyone who's interested. You're welcome.